Jerome Powell is boldly doing nothing for the foreseeable future. Set your calendars though because the Fed's next action was just bumped up to the end of 2023. In case of inflation, please slowly carve away at the glass. So why am I talking about a response moving so slowly that glaciers are currently trying to pass it? Well, because we just hit a fork in the road where Jerome Powell's ideology diverted from the previous chairman, Janet Yellen's ideology. She would have probably taken the off ramp by this point while Powell's sticking to the highway. You see, the American Federal Reserve System is operating under a dual mandate assigned to them by Congress. You have to fight inflation and maintain full employment. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, the problem is these dual mandates generally turn out to be dueling mandates. Are we here to throw water on the fire or gasoline? No wonder Yellen's term as Federal Reserve Chairman, as soon as that fire was starting to show signs of heat, well, throw a little water on it, keep inflation in check, and slow the economic growth that was creating new jobs. Now they achieved this by tinkering with the key interest rate. To briefly explain, this is, as the name would suggest, the one interest rate to rule them all. Essentially, it's the amount that the Federal Reserve is going to charge a bank to borrow money from them overnight. If you can get cash from the Federal Reserve for zero dollars, well, you're certainly not going to pay one percent to borrow it from a different bank. Similarly, if you have access to all this free cash, well, you're going to lend it out on the cheap to borrowers because we can get more of it. Don't cost us anything. You start raising that rate charged on Federal Reserve overnight loans, though, and all of a sudden banks start to charge each other a bit more, start charging consumers a bit more for loans, and money just generally finds a way of being more expensive to acquire. Great for fighting inflation, but not so great for the number of new job boostings on Indeed. Enter Janet Yellen, Jerome Powell's predecessor. She was looking at an economy that had just gone through the motions of getting out of the recession that was caused by 2008, but the economy wasn't growing quite as quickly as anyone had hoped. Things were certainly heading in the right direction, but they were taking their darn time getting there. Bernanke had left Yellen with zeroed out Federal Reserve interest rates and it was just a bit of a waiting game. The question was, when do you pull up? Are you going to be a paper hens chairman and call it a day as soon as things start heading in the right direction? Or are you going to be a diamond hens chairman and ride that recovery to the moon? Chairman Yellen was operating under traditional Federal Reserve doctrine created in the late 1970s, a time when inflation was high and growth was low. Stagflation. Now at that point, America was facing a tough choice. Which one of these two problems are we going to fight? Whichever one we choose, the other one is going to be exacerbated. You fight inflation and growth is going to slow. You fight growth and inflation is going to peak. In the end, they decided to protect the cash over the unemployed. The Fed's success in conquering the double digit inflation of the late 1970s created a legacy that Fed chairs sought to protect. Labor advocates have long argued that in doing so, the Federal Reserve had neglected its mandate to promote job creation, and in many ways the Fed agrees. Its policies kept inflation subdued, but cost American workers the higher wages and better employment opportunities that would have come from decades of stronger growth. Money retained its value, which was great if you had some. Now, Janet Yellen was strongly influenced by this period of inflation slaying and ran the Federal Reserve accordingly. The Fed, using its traditional approach, raised interest rates in December of 2015, for the first time since the 2008 financial crisis. Now, in part, this was because the overall unemployment rate was 5%, close to where the Fed had estimated full employment, 4.9%. Now, in hindsight, this was the ultimate paper hands move. Unemployment is down to 5%. Time to put out the fire. We're calling it quits. Oh, what a run we had, though. At that time, though, the mood was very different. The plan was to gradually raise rates and just calm down the economy. Maybe we can get a soft landing as the economy recovers. 
Now, this all wasn't as absurd as it sounds, but it was a very conservative way in the classical sense of the term. Think about it like starting to tap on the brakes when you're a whole block away from the stop sign. We still have a ways to go. You sure you don't want to cruise for a bit longer? Well, the problem is in this case that the Federal Reserve never managed to bring inflation consistently up to the 2% since making that their target in 2012, and their employment projections had been wrong time and time again. Basically, America started tapping on the brakes a whole block away from the stop sign and ended up stopping in the middle of the road. We could have definitely cruised for quite a bit longer. Now, After the fact, the Federal Reserve governors all got together and released a real tell me what you really think deconstruction of Yellen's decisions. In it, Fed Governor Brainard hit at the core of today's ideological struggle. She said, ideally there would have been a different concept of inflation, in a sense that there was no need to preemptively withdraw or prepare withdraw on the basis of an expectation of inflation materializing. Now to just go back to Yellen's justification for raising rates in 2015, current inflation was not a factor in that decision. The driving force was that employment had reached a full amount and if it was allowed to keep going, high inflation would follow. Let's just kneecap that growth before inflation even happens in the first place. Now, Unfortunately for this theory, as we all now know, the Trump administration brought with it the lowest unemployment rates in decades and no inflation. Now this brings us to the current Fed chairman, Jerome Powell, who derived two lessons from his predecessor. First, the big one, don't preemptively attack inflation. His decisions are not driven by low unemployment or a fear of reaching some full unemployment. Instead, he's got his eyes glued to the inflation rate and his hands on the throttle. Maximum growth for as long as possible. The new self-written mandate is not to aim for an average unemployment rate of say 4.9%, but rather to pursue an average 2% inflation rate. Now, This means that Powell would let inflation overshoot the target during a recovery in order to make up for periods below 2% during the downturn. Now, Because of this reprioritization of employment over inflation, despite the fact that the dashboard is currently lighting up with all sorts of warnings and the cabin is filling up with smoke, Powell has the kamikaze in his eyes and he's going to stay the course until, as of now, late 2023. He says that the inflation rate we're currently experiencing is transitory and it's going to go down on its own. Link at the end for a video explaining that debate. And on top of that, he'll say, well, just look at the old graph right now. Does that look like an average of 2%? We bought ourselves a little time in the sun with all those lower than average rates. Now, To fully understand the decision making of Jerome Powell, we need to talk about one final factor, the other lesson he learned from Janet Yellen. What does America sacrifice by pulling the economic ripcord too soon? Well, as you can imagine, making money more expensive slows the economy, so fewer jobs. Not great. There's a deeper cost though that we only started to scrutinize during the Powell era, due in large part to the effort of Raphael Bostic, the first black head of a regional Federal Reserve bank, got his job in 2017. We started studying the effects of these previously considered neutral policies on different populations. Turns out that when you make it harder to get a loan or a job, well, that harm is magnified for certain communities. To go back to Yellen's fateful 2015 decision, the overall unemployment rate was 5%, close to where the Fed had its estimate of full employment, but black unemployment was 8.5%. Taking that gap into consideration could help reduce racial inequality. And now, before you think, Wait, is he trying to just top off this episode with a little critical race theory? You know, get some dislikes from the few people who stuck around? This is no small factor in Jerome Powell's current decision making. The Fed is now recognizing that its actions cost black and Hispanic Americans even more dearly. As a part of Jerome Powell's new framework, the Fed describes full unemployment as a broad based and inclusive goal. 
That's shorthand for looking not just at aggregate unemployment numbers, but also at labor market indicators for different segments of the population, including black unemployment. Pretty much every time I've ever heard Jerome Powell give a speech on anything, heck, even probably during his Starbucks orders, he mentions unemployment rates and economic statistics of minority populations. And it's clear that he's paying more attention than previous chairmen. As of now, things are not great either for that community. The black unemployment rate in May of 2021 was 9.1% down from a pandemic peak of 16.7%, but still well above the pre-pandemic low of 5.2%, let alone white pre-pandemic lows of 3%. It seems that Powell is a bit more determined to help minorities that were left out of previous recoveries, where the Federal Reserve Bank responded sooner rather than later to the threat of inflation. So will this new strategy pay off? Well, some people don't think so. As inflation numbers continue to grow faster than predicted, this low interest rate line is becoming harder and harder to tell. Although, unlike the Federal Reserve, my interest is peaked. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! As I mentioned earlier, click here if you want to hear about the debate as to whether inflation is transitory or something more permanent. Thank you to my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking the overlooked, click on that link in the description. Like, subscribe, and do all that other fun YouTube stuff. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.